Hello and welcome to the first multi-province beyond Skyrim stream. Today we're joined, <laughs> and I can hear myself. Ah, oh, I should have muted that. Okay, that's a very professional opening. So today we're joined by the teams from elsewhere, Cyrodiil and Roskria, as we take a journey from elsewhere through Cyrodiil and Skyrim before finally voyaging to Roskria for our Khajiit hero to start a new life on the island at the end of the world. And with that, we'll head over to the Elsewhere team as we get our adventure underway. Today, we have myself, Trendane, who is uh, introing, but not quite hosting. We have Mr. JGT, Cyrodiil Landscaping Lead and your pilot for today. We have Mr. Rob Wilson, who is our Elsewhere Lead. We have one shoot punk who has finally joined us, thanks to the wonders of Daylight Savings Time, is our Cyrodiil lead, Bellatrix, our Cyrodiil and Roscrea lead, and we may be joined by other members along the way, and plenty of the teams are in, te uh, in text chat to help answer your questions. So if you have any questions at all, please drop them into chat, and we will answer them as quickly <laughs> and efficiently <laughs> as we can. And so... Without further adieu, which I think means goodbye in German, I will hand it over to Mr. JGT. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming down. So we're going to start our trail here um, in Elsewhere, where our Khajiit character has been saved mysteriously from slavers who are taking him across to the great city of Rimen. Uh, so, Rob, if you want to talk a bit more about Rimen, its history and law within Beyond Skyrim, and I will... Uh, and they say they can't hear you. This again. <laughs> this again. They hear me. Well, let's find Can... out. Let's find out. Can anyone hear me? I'll say something controversial in a second. Ooh. Oh. Is this better? Right. Okay, they can... That okay, so... Be so hopefully people can hear me. So welcome to Elsewhere. Uh, as Trindana eloquently put, I'm the I'm Rob C.B. Wilson, and I'm an Elsewhere lead, and that is Rimen. So uh, Hayden asked for a big up. So here you go, Hayden. So Hayden's working on the walls. Uh, the textures are work in progress, as are the walls themselves. But that's basically what they'll look like once once they're completed. Uh, it just gives you. It's just there to give you an idea of the scale and the grandeur of the city itself. It's a very rich city-state and it's very ostentatious it shows off its wealth by having 60 foot high walls or however high, however high they are and shed loads of money um well once we've got the assets in these areas will be surrounded by rice paddies and farms because the people in Rimen are very hungry and so are the slaves so they've got to feed them with something um so off we trot do you need to pick anything up um Mr. JGT, or have you got everything you need? Uh, Usually he likes punching walls to death, but we should pick some stuff up. Today we do have stuff for us to pick up. I have put some... There is the some of the Rimen uh, gear lying around that these bandits were using, uh, since they were funded by the city. Um, so we've got... Let's pick all this stuff up and have a look at it. Our beautiful Rimini shield, as you can see. The mace, by the looks of it. So they're all, you're, you're right, they're obviously well funded. They can get they've got the good gear. I would like to add one one quick note before we get too much further. Uh, for those of you who are listening, which I think there's like maybe twelve of you who are in the the, the stream right now. Um, if you could jump over to Twitter if you're on Twitter or whatever and Post a link to this stream and get your friends in here, presuming you have friends, of course. <clears throat> Sorry, please continue. And if you don't, that's cool. Uh, so, yes, we're so we're going from Rimen. We'll be stopping off next at the same as Sil Steps, uh, which are, as everything, uh, as it says in the bottom right-hand corner, work in progress. Uh, once the assets are in place, this will be a, a verdant green, it would have a verdant green grass, with wild herbs, it won't look anything like this. So these are these are placeholder textures. 
obviously, because they're not green, um, and they'll be replaced as we replace assets. Um, Hayden again is everywhere. He's working on the rocks, which unfortunately didn't make the stream. They're almost ready to show off, but uh, we couldn't get them merged in time. So uh, they're coming very soon. And he's also promised to work on the grass as well. So it will slowly transition out of this lovely browny yellow into a, a, a nicer green, and it'll be nearly knee high. And well, it'll just look it'll just look beautiful. And obviously, you can see Cyrodiil to the to the to the left in the distance there. Um, so we are coming. So we're now into the steps. So second, we will see a, a first settlement, uh, which is Valley Forge coming up, hopefully over this hill. Should probably do the first plea for um, people to come and join us and help as well. Actually, sounds like a good idea. Yep. So for those of you so who don't have help. friends, yes, please come and help. Us. <laughs> please come and help. So here we are. Sorry, Valley Guard. Yes. Um, I was going to say Valley Forge. Isn't that in? Never mind. Yes. No, that's my. I wrote that down by mistake. So Valley Guard, very well spotted. So these are our lovely Longhorn cattle. Uh, they are in need of a texture, as you can probably tell. Uh, and some food too. They're looking very skinny. So if anyone wants to join and help us with that kind of stuff, then that would be awesome. Um, in true Kajit's fashion, anything that in this scene that's not ours, we stole from Cyrodiil. So that fence on the left, the barrels on the right, those are all borrowed from our, our lovely neighbours to the north. Um, are we going, we're going up on that, on the buildings, are we? Yes. So the farm sets have just been retextured. Uh, they've still got some mesh issues which are being worked on. And on the left, yes, there we go. On the left, you can see uh, some of the lovely cushions that we've had uh, implemented for a while. Uh, the Khajiit like to eat, obviously, in groups and also outside, which is which you would understand with such a lovely view. So you can see uh, some normal food. I think we've got curry, I don't know why, uh, wheat and rice there, and some um, mooncakes um, for afters. And um, yes, and as I said, they all eat outside. and because Khajiit are very communal and very family oriented, they all eat together. Um, this area will expand as, as we go through. We're building clutter. We're putting in some uh, farm implements and other other assets just to make it richer. So the next time we do a stream, we'll, we'll probably go somewhere like this again and you'll be able to see the differences. There's, so there's the uh, mooncake and the biscuits, which whose name I can't pronounce, um, done by Mind Monkey some time ago. Uh, and the you see the the cattle farm um, as we as we leave it. You can see some flowers in the distance. Those are elsewhere flowers in Cyrodiil pots. Um, as I said, we steal everything that's not nailed down because we're Khajiit. Um, so now we're off. We're still in the same still steps. We're obviously still heading west. The uh, red line that you can see, the lovely red line, that's actually the border with Palatine. Obviously, we're not that we're not there yet. We have no assets for it, so but we can't hide it because it's there. So that's if you're wondering, that's what that is. Um, these rocks obviously are all placeholders. They're quite old. Um, the textures are a little on the ugly side. So again, if anyone wants to join and make new rock textures or fix up those meshes, then they're more than welcome. Um, so we're heading, as I said, we're heading west and we're heading towards the Badlands. Now that is the first look at our temple set. This is actually a place called Rajadir. Uh, you can see the temples there with some prayer flags up on them. Those are work in progress as well, the, both this, the mesh set and also the textures as well. Um, but I think they look beautiful already. Um, the only reason the rocks are on there is because the set's not finished and we didn't want to show you any holes. Yes, beautiful stuff. Wow. It's probably worth mentioning that of all the places we go through today, elsewhere is probably the earliest in development. So if you are thinking of joining Beyond Skyrim, um, well, we'd all love your help, but uh, elsewhere would absolutely love yeah, we, more modelers we, to get more assets we, so that they can start working on the other areas as well. Because we're pretty unique even within Beyond Skyrim. Because of our distance from Skyrim itself, we can't, we can't, use Skyrim assets for any reason because it, it just does it doesn't look right it would be too jarring because you're two provinces away and these people the people are completely different so everything that you see is made from fresh 
fresh meshes, fresh textures, the whole lot. So uh, it is a big ask, um, but it's it's exciting and challenging as well. So this is the Badlands now. Um, it is as bad as it sounds. It's just endless seas of sand and a lot of stuff that wants to kill you. Um, so um, like that bush right there. Very evil bush, yep, with, which probably will jump out at you and may have thorns, um, not to mention the exploding rocks as well. Um, it's just generally not. I mean, the, the clue's in the name a little bit. Uh, it's just not a nice place. Um, it's it has a very unique aesthetic, and again, within Beyond Skyrim, it's empty, but we need to have it full of stuff. So there's somebody that didn't quite make it. They tried, uh, and they fell over and died. Um, must be, you add, I take it you added that, Mr. JGT. Yeah, I just wanted a nice way of yep. introducing uh, one of the another of the elsewhere weapons. Uh, awesome. So yes, this is yeah. our iron set. Yep. Yeah, so there's both your iron and your rimanies are already in game, aren't they? Um, unfortunately, we're only yep. seeing a quick view of both of them. Um, but hopefully, we'll be able to show them off a lot more in the future. Yes, so one of the things that I'm working on is the, um, the yurt set, and I'm working on a merchant yurt uh, at the moment. And once that's implemented, we'll have, in Orcrest, we'll have some yurts with uh, shopkeepers. Uh, so we'll have just, just the normal shops, general general stores, weaponsmiths, uh, that kind of thing. And they'll be able to show off uh, all of all of our new, st our new wares in one place, but the, the yurts aren't ready yet. So, um, so yes, we're showing off as many as we can but uh, they're not ready yet. Uh, so this is the Badlands proper. Now, what you may have noticed is that the weather has changed and it's a heck of a lot brighter. So uh, that's awesome because it makes everything look completely, I mean, you're as far from Skyrim now as you possibly could be. It's beautiful, beautiful blue sky, lots and lots of sand. And the only challenge is that because it's so bright, all the textures are quite light. So that it's possibly a little, it's not, doesn't look too bad, but some of them are, a little bit brighter than we would like uh, so we have to adjust things but uh, the weather's beautiful Ho we also have a sandstorm which is configured hopefully hopefully we have one i got one it when we does, were testing this um, morning. come up sometimes it's just not a guaranteed yeah. thing yeah it's not guaranteed so hopefully fingers crossed we will see one but if not uh you probably saw the picture of it when we were uh, in before we started the stream but fingers crossed we'll get one do we um uh, across the the whole of the Beyond Skyrim thing, for all for all the various teams, do we do collectibles like collectible items that you can get? Um, do do you mean kind of like uniques and stuff? It kind of well, specifically, what was in my head there was when we were crossing that that red sand that it would be interesting if you could get like from each province of of Tamriel, you could get a, a an hourglass that had sand from each. You know, different colored sand. Of course, the one from Skyrim would just be snow that doesn't melt. But you know, I, I was like, you know, it would be interesting to have different colored sand from different provinces. That, that might be cool. an interesting collaboration with uh, Legacy of the Dragon. There. That's a that's a good idea, lost. actually. Yeah, was that one shoe? Yeah, I think we lost one yes. shoe. Um, we do have an hourglass in game, so we could absolutely do research. That would be really cool, actually. So we are now um, in the dry grasslands, uh, which is the region south of Riverhold. Um, this will stay relatively the same because it's described as a, a having yellow green grass, which is okay. This is yellow brown, but uh, it's a lot closer <laughs> closer in its look in terms of what it'll look like in the final version, as opposed to the same as Sil Steps, which looks nothing like what it will. Uh, it will have sandstone spires. So these rocks. Uh, we have one set of rocks for the whole of elsewhere at the moment, which is why you see a lot of them. Uh, each prov each province, each region will have its own rock set. Uh, we're just waiting for people to make them. Uh, this will be home to nomadic tribes with cattle and goats. So some of the cows you saw um, earlier in the stream will be ro roaming free and wild here, along with some goats as well. Um, this is a more peaceful area of elsewhere. It's described as having rolling hills, peaceful wild wildlife, and gentle winds. So it sounds like a nice place to go on holiday because um, you've got the weather as well. And as Do I mentioned, you you've got... actually have a question that's related to this. So Sky Dragon 2 asked, are you guys using ESO elsewhere chapter for some inspiration 
for what the area will look like. So I think it's all the areas in general, but as we're transitioning through them and you're sort of describing what you've got planned for a meet, sort of where did the team take their inspiration from? So, so we, we had the majority of our inspiration before ESO. Uh, and we on a on a on a large scale, we haven't really changed our our way way of doing things. That what we are looking at is some of the um, pieces that enhance the life so that like things like the clutter uh, and the law um, have changed a little bit but in terms of the actual environment it hasn't changed at all um, things like our our rim and our river hold uh, we had already started before ESO was even released so it, it would be a bit silly for us to throw all that work away uh, and start again uh, but we are we are excited by ESO and we are going to use it as I said, particularly for smaller things, but don't expect it to suddenly be, suddenly change and come more like that. Because as everyone's experience, it's, it can be a bit patchy in its quality, um, and we weren't blown away by um, by what we saw on a macro scale. Um, so now we're quickly coming into the northern canyons. So uh, the first thing I have to mention before we get too far is that these roads are. These roads will not be will not be around very much longer. These are legacy roads that have been in in place for maybe four or five years, and they're all in the wrong place. So this road that we're going along here will this area will stay flat, but it'll be replaced by smaller tra trails and um, dirt paths, which is more indicative of the people that will be using it. Bandits and other ne'er do wells will be using this area, so it doesn't make sense for them to have a a road like this. So and you'll see why shortly when we go up some of the really steep ones that it's just not a you couldn't you couldn't put a carriage through half of these roads so it doesn't make sense to be a road uh the this is one of my favorite areas of elsewhere because of the it makes you feel very small because the those rock faces are absolutely massive and those towers are huge as well the the idea behind the design of this is that <coughs> you'll be able to go up you'll be able to go up into those rocks so that was i just put that as a poi um You'll be able to go up in, into the rocks and actually explore the area above, and will be things to do above. So it's so we're not talking what one layer and underground and elsewhere. We're talking one layer on the on the ground level, underground, and then one or two up. So you'll be able to go up into those arches and play around in the clouds and things. Uh, it's a shame we can't implement climbing, but we'll do the next best thing. We'll have archways and and, and ways that you can get up into the higher areas because we are as i'm sure you've seen on the map we're one of the smallest provinces in terms of space in beyond skyrim but that doesn't mean that we can't pack in a heck of a lot of um content we just have to be clever because obviously we've got areas like the badlands that we came through just before that are their aesthetic is that they are empty and dangerous so you can't you can't have uh, a temple every 20 yards in somewhere that's supposed to be empty and dangerous so we have to be clever about how we do our level design which is as with everything and elsewhere, is difficult and exciting all at once. So, um, we also have a request to see the map location. Well, okay, oh, we I can't do that. The map? Live game map, yeah. There's not much on it, but yes, we can do. So, <clears throat> we've come across from Rimen on the far right of the screen all the way across northern elsewhere so far um, and soon we we're gonna kind of head north now and make our way slowly into Cyrodiil Uh, and in the canyons here, there's going to be the city of June, isn't there, Rob? Because Discord just decided to... Uh, we've got we've got June to the to the west uh, and Riverhold and Orcris to the east now. Um, and the the road does basically a big ring around the northern canyons and connects up those cities uh, in a ring and also obviously uh, connects up Cyrodiil. 
I apologize, Skyrim just crashed. Oh no. But I so, had to tab out a few times due to Discord and stuff. Oh, I guess that's time for questions. Yeah. I was going to say, for those, for those of you with the questions, we had we had one question, will there be quest lines? No. Even if there uh, were, you guys wouldn't follow yeah, them. No, you no, just no. run off and do whatever you wanted to. That's how you play Skyrim. Yeah, that's, that's it's how it's going to be blank Skyrim. and empty with lots of cool stuff to find. Yeah. I know there'll be lots of quests. We don't obviously have any in-game yet in Elsewhere, but we have lots of quests planned. We have our main quest written out already. Uh, OMWDA, the writing leader, is working on that. And um, yes, there'll be as many quests as there are in Skyrim in terms of density. So uh, don't worry, there'll be plenty to do. And because because we have vertical, ver verticality in our province, there'll be lots of things to find uh, in unexpected places. So ooh, yeah. There's a skull rolling down the road. Macabre rolling skulls down the road. I love, I love the faces the jaws thing? are opening and closing. <laughs> rah, rah. And they're having a race as well, a very weird skull race. So, wow, that's something you don't see every day, really. You just hear them. Hear them. Hear them yeah. <laughs> this one will win. Oh, this one will win. And there's bound to be somebody with putting odds on which one will win as well right, as they yeah. roll down the hill. Uh, so that could actually be a fun game. If, if anyone wants to join elsewhere before we rip the northern canyons out, you can roll skulls down these very steep roads. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we're back in the northern canyons, which is awesome. Um, so, yes, the, the rocks, obviously, as with every, everywhere else, the rocks will be replaced here. But this this very the very steep walls and the aesthetic will stay absolutely the same. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll have lots of arches and ramps so that you can get up there and have a play around um, and do a, do Assassin's Creed assassinations as well. What you'll also find is that the um, the bandits in this region will use the verticality, verticality as well. So they'll have their, they won't just be camped down the bottom surrounded by surrounding a campfire. They'll be s stuck up there with bows and arrows and they'll be trying to kill you from distance. So uh, the NPCs will also use the verticality as well. That'll all be nav meshed and uh, they'll be able, uh, be able to get up there and do all sorts of nasty things to you. Um, and, so, um, Carson would like to know how, how large is the uh, elsewhere area compared to Skyrim? Well, that's a good question. I don't actually know the answer to that. Is it, is it roughly half the size of Skyrim? Half the size, mm -hmm. there you go, yeah. I so saw it is, it an is interesting small. question yeah. about the different subtypes of Khajiit and will you be featuring them? Featuring them? It's all, all the first docs will be featured. I think there's, is it 16, I think? Uh, there's there's a well-known um, image that floats around the internet that a lot of people think beyond, uh, that actually Skyrim itself made uh, that shows them all and we will be featuring all of them. They won't be playable because that goes against the Beyond Skyrim charter, but they will be they will be featuring and i am sure that soon after we release somebody will release a mod making all of those playable because that's just a cool thing to do so uh yes yes we're we've got somebody mun and crow working on two or three of the first stock at the moment uh to add them in so this is the these are these are the steep roads i was mentioning these will not be in game it makes no sense um you you, you can barely climb them let alone use them so um these will be gone within a week or so uh, we're going to start uh, stripping this area out and and redoing it um, and the roads will be first to go so don't worry about the roads uh, so we are now coming into well soon we'll be coming into another little settlement this is a a wheat farm we have three types of farming in in elsewhere we have rice farming which is traditionally around the Rimmon area we have wheat farming which is in this area and also will pop up in another, another few areas. And we also have cattle farming, both nomadic and also um, fixed location as well. Stuff. And there's some more of those Joshua trees as well. Um, as I said, they're endemic to the region and they're, they're also, that, that, that's, that's what this area will be known for, will be, will be spiky, nasty plants like that. Um, yeah, and the lot does need updating around here due to the fact that we yes. recently so, changed things. <laughs> so that what you're seeing now is just a, everyone blink a couple of times and you'll see something completely different. So uh, I I up, I redid the, oh, there we go. It's just popped in. So hey, presto, like, just like magic, 
those are no longer Cyrodiil farmhouses. These are now elsewhere farmhouses, mm -hmm. and that is the location of Sheron. Now that on once we swing around a little bit further, just to the east will be the will be the road that will take directly take you directly to Riverhold, and to the west that swings around very very quickly to Cyrodiil. Um, so yes, this is a wheat farm, and as I said earlier, the, the all the implements will have three sets of implements, and those will those will be in game shortly. You can see that there's a little post where the uh, where the farmers put their wheat up on um, up on a up on a stand so that they can, that can be transported by carriage to um, to Riverhold uh, for sale, uh, and we're just about out of elsewhere now. So we're we're about. About two minutes from the border, I would suspect, yeah. uh, and we see some water. Yeah, so we see. So elsewhere does have water. You can see it on the right hand side there. There's even a little bit of green, uh, which is which makes a nice change from all the yellow and brown and orange, and um, that is uh, that is actually the border, the, the the river, which I forget the name of it. Mr. J. Doesn't have a name, I think, at the moment. It's one that we oh, invented have ourselves. But it flows into the Strid. It's a tributary of the Strid, but we've yet to actually give it its own proper name. Um, but as we swing around now, uh, you can see kind of Cyrodiil laid out before you. Um, and you can see uh, Skingrad, which we're not going to today. Apologies for anyone who was hyped up to hopefully see Skingrad today. Um, you can see that kind of as we come around to the bridge that we're going to cross. You can see that it's kind of basically straight in front of us, the castle walls. Um, but yeah, over the bridge, and we now find ourselves into Cyrodiil. So, yes, How so that is the end of is... <laughs> What time did we set off, and what time is it now? It's done three o'clock. Half an hour so far. Yeah, half an hour. Yeah. I'm sorry, I meant in the game. Oh, in the game. Uh, it's just past. We set off basically at six in the morning, and it's half twelve now. Nice. That's a fair distance we've covered. And we've got the uh, beautiful Cyrodiil soundtrack coming in. So this is the Westweald area of Cyrodiil, which we're currently in the process of kind of doing up and improving. It's one of our main kind of focus areas. Uh, so everything here is very much a uh, work in progress. Yes, you can see and you can see Kavach in the distance and Skingrad at the same time, actually. You can see the castle at Skingrad and you can see Kavach, which is really nice. And that's one of the things I personally really love about Cyrodiil is there's so many places where you can stand and you can see across and you can see so many cities and stuff and you can kind of you know kind of say oh i'm gonna head over there uh, and stuff like that so it's it's really fun in that respect to play some questions from it. i've seen quite a few popping up um so the the most recent ones will there be different variants of ebony daedric armor and weapons for each province or only iron and steel oh and bossy answer now Maybe we shouldn't answer that one. Um, we've got our own variants of some of them. I don't think we do all of them because some of them it doesn't make sense. It's on uh, what's available in the local region, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and some things like Daedric, it's like... I know Morrowind, I believe, they're having some because they're focusing on Daedra quite a bit, whereas in Cyrodiil, we're not really having Daedra. I'm not sure we're having too many either. So, so, and we th we have things like Moonstone, which is native. Well, if it's, if a stone can be native, is native to our region. And yeah. same with Roscrea, we've got Mithril, um, which is, I guess, the equivalent of Elven, and then Bronze, which isn't Daedric, but it's sort of like it's a high status heavy armor. I think it would be a fair assumption to say that we would all have something like Iron, but. Uh, and possibly steel, but we certainly wouldn't have each a version of everything because it, it just wouldn't make sense. It's, obviously, it also depends on the climate because elsewhere is quite hot. Um, 
most most of the armor worn will be light armor and also because they're Khajiit, they don't wear they don't wear plate armor very much so that will also be a factor as well where Just are we to... now then we are wandering basically the strid river is kind of down in the valley at the bottom and we are wandering around uh the woodlands of the west field I think we're joined by Wanshi now, so he is uh, one of the Cyrodiil co-leads. Can you can hear me? Did we hear you, Wanshi? Uh, yeah, there he is. Just about. Oh, it keeps cutting out, I, I think I'm going to have to... Uh -oh. Yep, it's still cutting out. It wouldn't be beyond Skyrim live stream without a P technical difficulties. Yeah. So yeah, nice here next. we've got our Aelid uh, war axe. That's part of our Aelid set that's currently being worked on. You'll have seen some of it in Bruma. Um, but now we are working on the rest of the set to uh, bring the whole thing to life and really give our Aelids something more to uh, kind of really develop their culture beyond just the hey look it's the white marble ruins in the middle of the wilderness that they were in oblivion i hadn't seen the axe before that's really cool so there's a sweet axe isn't it mm. and there is also the uh mage gauntlets that i uh put out So those are uh, some cool stuff so, we've got. Yeah, so the, yes, there will be other joinable factions and each each province will have them. What they are is probably still for some a closely guarded secret, but yes, there will be an answer to a question that just came up. If somebody wants to see the player character, Mr. JGT, if you could. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll just get to our next kind of location because we're going to have a bit of a chat there anyway. Um, and then I'll show off the character while we also talk about... Because um, it's a small settlement that is going to be very important for people who play Cyrodiil. So we will uh, we'll talk about things here. absolutely love the flowers in the West World. They're really pretty. The pr what's the process of adding things to it into beyond Skyrim? Well, it's Skyrim, so it's complicated. <laughs> but, um, but once you get used to it, the first time you do it, you feel like you're working in a foreign language. But once you get used to it and you've asked all, all the silly questions that you normally have to when you learn something, it's not actually that bad. And one of the things that's great about beyond Skyrim and Skyrim modding in general is that everybody helps each other out because everybody remembers that one day they started and they didn't know a thing. So it's it's a process that we have to work through uh and it gets easier with time it's not it's not horrible yes aura angel girls really exist um so <laughs> this is the they do. town of foxvale which if you play through the knights of the nine storyline in cyrodiil this will be a central location and one that you visit um a lot of the time i'll show you where we are in regards to cyrodiil so we are down the imperial city is up kind of to the northeast ish of here and you're down hidden in the west weald so yeah players will visit here quite often um as part of that quest line and get to know it quite well How's the Imperial City coming along? It's coming along. Um, we won't be showing it off today, though, unfortunately. Uh, Marcus is still working on the models, although I'd say they're over fifty. They're well over fifty percent done now, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and then we'll have an awful lot of level design and interior design to do. So it is 
by far the biggest city we've got to tackle. And then here is the old um, Priory of the Nine from the original Knights of the Nine. So here's another location close by that the players... A lot of these models are either work in progress or um, placeholder ones for the eventual full uh, models that are either in progress or have yet to be started. Still very nice for placeholder assets though. Mm. But we shall uh, now head off and we will join the road um, that one day will lead to Riverhold. So there will be lots of different ways for the player to cross the border into uh, elsewhere from Cyrodiil. It's not going to be just a few set points because we do have the advantage of um, having a larger open border we're not surrounded by mountains like um, Skyrim is so we do have the advantage of being able to have the player choose their own way into elsewhere a bit it'd be very difficult to make it work if they weren't in the same height map the mm. two because there's there's no not there's no natural geographic boundary between the two like there are for most of the other provinces they are so open it would just it would it wouldn't very uh, immersive to just have random gates so right now we're in one of the many border um, outposts that the legion has set up in the years following the great war um, which was done obviously as a kind of a bit of a deterrent against the Dominion, but also the ability to kind of keep an eye on the Dominion and respond incredibly quickly uh, in the event that the Dominion decides to attack Cyrodiil again. I hopefully you can respond incredibly quickly. Yes, hopefully it won't be like last time. I guess time will tell. Um, so we have had a question. Someone wants to know uh i can't even pronounce their name will there be a live another life starts um we won't do it ourselves i don't think at least not in the original release i know some of us have discussed at times um adding one maybe as a post-release piece of content so that's something that we'll kind of have to think about and see but it's no guaranteed yet um but we always encourage other modders to kind of use our work as a kind of base level thing and then uh, add their own stuff to it. So hopefully going forward, uh, people will be able to do that and you'll be able to um, enjoy these other mods using ours as a kind of baseline. I mean, there are a couple for Bremer already, but and I think um, most of us in the project would really like to see this kind of thing so you could actually start as a Khajiit that's been freed from uh, being kidnapped and taken to Rimmon and actually do this for real yeah. is the idea when everything's out. One of the big cool things about um, Bruma coming out is seeing all the kind of mods that people have done afterwards like using it as a basis and kind of seeing what people have done with it so it's a really interesting thing to see what where we've kind of gone, all right, that's enough. What people have gone, no, it's not. Let's let's take it further. And I think that's one of the great things about this project is we're kind of building a new game, and then other people are going, and let's make it even better, kind of thing. So it's 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 so cool. Everyone wants to see the map again. We're not that far from where we were, so there's not a huge <laughs> amount of point. Could uh, just switch the map view. I'll for an hour, couldn't show, we? Right, it's going to auto save when I show the map, so I'm going to use it as a useful point. Right, so yeah, we're just di like directly south of the Imperial City now. Maybe I'll have to look at next time getting like a little thing in the corner of the map, like a mini map showing where we are. That would be cool. Zargo, we do not need functional weapons. Thank you very much. Ever. No one uses weapons. 
To be fair, as a Khajiit, I have been running around punching walls to death and stuff. Which is quite entertaining. Uh, someone's asked, will there be factions trying to stop us from crossing borders or staying in different parts of Tamriel? Uh, not really. I mean, so the, to get from Skyrim into Cyrodiil is a bit tricky, unless you can convince the guard captains to let you through or you're a member of the Imperials. So I imagine there will be things like that. And some of the NPCs will recognise if you're a different race and probably comment on it. But I don't think there are any plans. I'm not aware of any province having plans to stop people entering if they play as a specific character. Certainly don't do that. Yeah, I think it'll be similar in some places to how it is at the Skyrim Cyrodiil border. So, for example, to get into Black Marsh or Hammerfell, somewhere outside the Empire from Cyrodiil, they might, you know, stop you and be like, why are you wanting to cross the border? So, yeah, it's not always going to be walk across, especially when it's between different um, different world spaces. Though we'll, we'll probably have some kind of someone there to ask you why you're wanting to cross before you can cross. And Mr. One Shoot Punk would like to know if we can look down into the valley briefly. Who's he? And I've, I've heard the name before. <laughs> I think he might be related to Charles Manson. I'm really not sure. Yeah, I just love how peaceful Cyrodiil is. It's a wonderful place to uh, just wander around, which does sometimes make actually making them more, more difficult when you want to just test something and then you've like two hours later you're like wait i was meant to be doing stuff not wondering about <laughs> yeah uh -huh. <clears throat> i think when everything out is out the main problems are going to be when you go off adventuring what do you wear and what weapons do you take and also where do you live i'm going to have an extensive property empire we visit the imperial city not today unfortunately no. so that's still very work in progress um but i believe we might do a fly past of uh we the old will city be running past the imperial city because we kind of have to but we won't be visiting today um and we won't be getting very close but today so we I'm... are going to visit bravel which is what we're heading towards now. So we're going to have a quick run through Ravel to kind of show you the overall feel of the place. Um, but we're not really going to stop there because I was on the serial team. We're going to have another stream where we really kind of show Ravel off properly and do some quests and other things because we're just starting the implementation of the quests and stuff uh, in Ravel. So in hopefully like, you know, early next year we can really show this off properly and give it some justice and the play you know you as can see what you will get to do as players in Ravel. One's just said one of my biggest gripes of the Elder Scrolls series was the roads always felt empty and desolate apart from the occasional garbage hole on the road. Will there be travelling merchants or refugees on the road to hold up and rob if you decided to be a bandit or something? I mean yeah obviously this is all very work in progress and early footage so the roads will be a lot more populated. Uh, Bravel will be a lot more populated. So, um, if you come back in a few months' time, it should be full of NPCs wandering around. So, at the moment, most of what you see today is just the landscaping. And then, once we've done that, we'll add sort of guard patrols and little points of interest to make it feel less empty. Yeah, that statue back there was the statue of Mara, who is the uh, patron deity of Bravel. And of course, when you come through here in the final game, there will be things like people. Yes. Yeah, we're just about to start adding people in. So next time we show it off, the, it, here will be a live, not just a dead husk. But better that than a live husk. That's just... <laughs> and then, yeah, we've actually given Bravel some docks as well, uh, which is something they didn't have in the previous game. Because it... You know, it makes sense. So now we're crossing over um, to the other side of the Nibbon. Uh, 
once we have the full game set up, uh, we'll have a ferry system going between some of the smaller areas, uh, some of the small towns on the edge, like Bravels back over to the uh, southwest of where we are. It's just want to show that on the map. Yeah, I'm just going to... So, yeah, we've crossed over now. And hopefully that gives you a sense of... Uh, there'll be a ferryman who will uh, deliver you around uh, the various small towns. So, Water's Edge. Um, here, this small town, this is Ferryman's Crossing. Named because it's, you know, where the ferryman lives. Uh, Bravel, the Imperial City Waterfront. Ah, and now we get to see some of, uh, we'll get to see some of the Cyrodiil cows in a minute. And the bull. Yeah, someone was suggesting the other day that you should make the bulls hostile. That would be quite funny. Yeah. And now we're in the kind of Nibbon Basin area. Uh, we're kind of in... We're, we're kind of just going into County Shadenhall now. And everything that comes with that. So we're not seeing Shadenhall today. But, uh, because we've only, we haven't really started work on Shaden Hall yet. I just have uh, another question to say. Is there a main quest line or will it be like Bruma with mini quests? Um, so that's one thing that we should make really clear. So with Bruma, it was a pre-release for us. So we, we had one sort of mini main quest line, but it was more just to give everyone a taste of what the mod would be like when it was finished. Um, for the full Cyrodiil release, because we're emulating Skyrim, it will be like a full Skyrim game. So there will be several, well, there'll be a, a full main quest line, but there'll also be several uh, sort of faction quest lines. So things like the Thieves Guild, Fighters Guild, that kind of thing. Um, so it should feel seamless with playing Skyrim. It'll be sort of that level of content again. Bremer was a little bit different because it's just a pre-release, so we had a couple of mini quests in there to keep everyone occupied, and that should seamlessly integrate into the the full Cyrodiil release. But um, yeah, we didn't have an overriding quest arc for it. So we've arrived at Cropsford. Which it seems is... to be getting dark. Yes. It does seem to be getting dark. And it might be a handy place to have for us to rest our weary heads. So here we can see some of this, uh, the food and stuff that you'll see is stuff that we've uh, you've seen before. But there is some new stuff that I don't think was in Bruma, like corn. Yeah, corn wasn't in Bruma. Um, Which begs the question, the is one popcorn in within you. the Elder Scrolls universe? <laughs> it probably is now. <laughs> The idea is um, we have the different cultures of Colovia and um, Nibbani and hopefully, although the wardrobe's got the wrong clothing in it, but hopefully when you're in the different regions, culturally they should feel quite distinct. And then I think agriculturally it's actually split up into about three different regions, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so in Colovia you've got a kind of potato kind of a lot of the crops similar to what you see in Skyrim with potatoes and things. Maybe I've uh, slept a little bit early, but we are Ever heard south. of a place called Barren Caves? Word is that vampires and undead if, I don't know if it would be possible to do this, but um uh bull rushes, uh, cattails as we call them here in America. Um reed mace as they're referred to in uh, Middle Earth. Uh they have a a, a very nice um very kind of creamy starch potato sort of rhizome at the bottom. So I don't know if, if there's ever going to be a plan to do something like that. We do have bulrushes in game, but they're a land texture rather than a placeable plant. Um, um. So, I mean, it's not impossible that we could add them in. 
Um, I mean, it's something I don't know if like Black Marsh might have something similar. It sounds like the kind of thing that Argonians would chow down on. Um, so yeah. I've just seen the question, have we added Easter eggs? I don't think there's many at the moment, but I have a few in my head that I'm not telling on a stream because I want you guys to go out and find them when it's, you know, we fully release. <laughs> And there is oh, a couple. There is there no some in Bruma. There, so. There's a few in Bruma, yeah. <laughs> but there's none in the newer areas yet, I don't think. Or not there definitely will be. No, oh, there will be. There's one I've been sitting on for years that I've yet to put in game. <laughs> is it going to hatch at any point, or are you just sitting on it? Just sitting on it for now. Oh, Basically, I need to work back on an area I've worked on previously to put it in game. What kind of animals will we be able to see? So is that a Cyrodiil specifically, I guess? Uh, they, if it's the person, I think they've been asking it for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. So, obviously, depending on where you are, there's all sorts of play. There's all sorts of animals throughout. Um, a lot of what you see in Oblivion, you'll get throughout uh, Cyrodiil. Um, and elsewhere, they've got a whole new set of creatures, some of which seen by those in um, the ESO edition uh, chapter for uh, elsewhere. And the rest of it will be new stuff that they've added in themselves. Yes, the Imperial City is just to the um, just to the west of us. Yeah, but we have a couple of, of animals that we've shown off. I think we've sh uh, shown off the Rimini's wolf uh, in the showcase in the concept art, and we've also got the Slargy, which is a, a bit like a capybara, but uh, not uh, that's already been modelled but isn't in game yet. So, and we have plans, as Mr. JGC, JGT said, to make more. Uh, we just need to design them. Uh, I think what will happen across all the provinces is that each of the main roles, like herbivore carnivore etc will be filled but by different creatures um i saw a question will there be uh the arena in the imperial city yes there will be the arena in the imperial city yes you will be able to fight there um and there probably will be some quests associated with it like there was in oblivion i was and asking how far is anvil to completion Anvil is fairly early, well, it's been partially written, and I'm currently working on it to get it to a really good point in game, so, yeah. Hopefully it's something we'll show off in the near future. Not one of the cities we're actively working on, so Bravil, we've almost finished the interiors and starting implementation. Coral is done exterior wise and where you've done some of the interiors and then it's anvil's a bit further behind well. those yeah yeah skin has got its writing done and we're gonna start on interiors for that soon anvil's uh, probably the one behind that i'm going to pronounce the name garbagest instead of garbagest um <clears throat> asked a very interesting question will the talos pro <laughs> uh, yes this is why i'm a voice actor will the talos plaza district be renamed uh, yes, I believe it is going to be, well, last time it was discussed, we were going to rename it to the Crown District, which is what it's called in ESO, um, but that's not like a set thing yet. Once we really get into the Imperial City, we will give it a proper name and title, and we shall leave it as that. And Gunnar, we can't afford West Johnson. As much as we would love to have him on the project, <laughs> we cannot afford West Johnson. Where are those shady funding practices when you need them? Hmm. Look up. There's nothing above us. I mean, there's the Imperial City with really dodgy lod. I don't know why my Imperial City lod is broken. Once you kind of see it. What's Kavach like at the moment? It's absolutely gorgeous. One of the things I love about Kavach is the stones in the streets. They're just, you know, every now and again you go in and you kind of get a little 
pick and you sort of chisel your name in one of the rocks and then a couple of years later you come back and see if somebody's replaced it like a jerk. Oh, you mean how did... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Kvatch is not doing too badly. Yeah, Kvatch is... It's one of our kind of further ahead cities. Um, after Bruma, it's probably the most kind of done, arguably, at the moment. There are a couple of videos from about a year ago, I think, showing it off, yeah, so there's a little bit of gameplay. Uh, and it's been yeah. the same since then, so... But yeah, now we're getting close to the edge of the Bruma area, um, that I'm sure many of you know well. Too well. Mm. <laughs> we're about to go past the Forester's Hut, which actually didn't make it into the Bruma release area. But I just remember spending ages nav meshing around there and about a month before we released. It gives me flashbacks. I really like walking up this road because you can just look out. And it's one of those things you can look out across Cyrodiil and you can see into elsewhere. And it kind of gives you a sense of just, you know, how far we've come. And I'll show where we are on the map again, because people like to see where we are on the map. So you can see that we're just kind of south of the uh, Bruma release area. And no moon shadow, we've been going for about 45 minutes to an hour now. Pretty much at an hour now. And the weather seems to have taken a turn for the worst. Well, you are getting close to Skyrim. white gold tower happens here is i would have thought so yeah i think it will once we get round to it it's just not somewhere we're at yet and we stop for very, ice cream yeah <laughs> i was gonna say that's a very very serious question can we stop for an ice cream it's the most serious question we've had all day does ice cream exist in elder scrolls well, ice does so and cream and, does and cream does yeah, yeah. So. and sh and sugar does so i'm sure we could do something with that could you make moon sugar ice cream it could, but I don't know if you'd want to. Oh, you well, probably, you, you wouldn't. To. You wouldn't remember eating it, would you? Well, depends on how much you have. <laughs> well, that's true. To be fair, when... sugar ice cream would be really good when you're like out in the uh, really uh, in the badlands elsewhere. Just what you need to keep you cool. Yes. <laughs> and adventuring with a picnic, excellent. A lot of foxes on this road. There appears to be a lot of foxes in the Bruma release area. I've always kind of questioned it. The breeding grounds or something? Possibly. Is that a duck? Oh no, it's a deer. All right. Duck. <laughs> You've been eating moon sugar ice cream again, haven't you? This one does not have the moon sugar ice cream. I do like the uh, Cyrodilda. They're very different to Skyrim's. <laughs> Speaking of aggressive bulls, <laughs> <laughs> turn around and charge right into your face. We've had, we've had a few questions on Valenwood already, haven't we? So um, it's not planned at the moment, no. Um, it's not just because of the law and of because of any engine limitations it's also because of it's a, it's a manpower thing or a person power thing we don't want to split the people that we have working on the provinces already across another province so there we are at the moment not entertaining the idea of any extra provinces let alone not specifically Valen, but just in general and dylan since i didn't really introduce myself at the beginning of the stream i realized about 15 minutes ago um, I'm one of the voice actors on the, the, the project, and so to say that uh, I have <clears throat> a, a nice voice, I have this nice voice, I have this nice voice, I have this nice voice, I have several nice voices, which I use for various bits and pieces throughout the thing. 
including in Bremer. So if you've played through Bremer, you've heard Trendyne doing some voice acting for us. That is true. Evolved Tyrant. Although I can't remember specifically um, who. Can you get a wife in Cyrodiil? Yeah, and this is her voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will be able to. I think all the provinces are going to have marriage, um, a marriage system, aren't they? Yeah, I believe it's sort of planned for... Yep, it's planned for elsewhere. Not in Brima, but um, you will be able to in So now we are in... Um... Time to die. Okay, you can go kill the wolves. Um, now we're kind of into the... Uh, rumor release area, an area a lot of people might know quite well, and we're gonna venture through Skyrim, obviously. Uh, we'll kind of open up for questions quite a bit, so if people want to select questions and we can ask them, and then we can answer a few questions. Somerset isn't in development because of a similar reason to what I just said about Valenwood. We don't want to have extra provinces starting up because it'll dilute our um, our the amount we have and the amount of time they can spend on specific provinces. So we'd, we'd rather finish some before we start others. Well, Mara's systems work in other provinces because not all cultures worship Mara. Um, yeah, I presume that for those, there'll be something similar to the Skyrim Mara system, but it just won't be a chapel of Mara. Oh no. <laughs> she gets a Roscure from Skyrim. Um, yeah, <laughs> give it ten minutes and see. Stay tuned. Uh, Chandane, tell us about the dragons and special request by the E3 stream gang. I hope that makes more sense to you than it does to me. You, you know, actually, it doesn't make any sense to me. They've been <laughs> asking about dragons for several minutes now, and I have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Dragons, as far as I know, really only exist in Skyrim. And uh, so, so if you have one of those mods that puts dragons elsewhere in the room, in, in the world, I suppose you might run into them somewhere else. But as far as I know, they tend to be limited to Skyrim. If someone says they missed the beginning of the stream, is elsewhere in the same world space as Cyrodiil? Yes, it is. So, um, elsewhere in Cyrodiil are in the same world space. Morrowind and Blackmarsh are in the same world no, space, aren't they? Are they separate? Are they not? Are they separate? They're separate. And then Hammerfell and, well, Iliac Bay is just one area, but um, Hammerfell and High Rock are in the same world space as well. And then Roscrea is a separate world space, and Atmore is a separate world space as well. So you want me to say something feminine in the orc voice, and I just, I don't know, I think that these pants make me look fat. <laughs> That's fun. Um, I tried to find a question. So someone asked one, uh, this was ages ago, so we were back in elsewhere at the time, but they were asking how installing the mods would go and would there be a master mod or anything like that. So it will be very similar to how we released for Bruma. So all the provinces are dependent on uh, ESM called uh, BS Assets, and that's got all our shared assets in it. So, and things like the ships that are common to all uh, the provinces, um, quite a lot of feeds in there, that kind of things. Um, so that's all in BS Assets. Um, and then every separate region is dependent on that. And then we have a second ESM, so um, BS Heartlands and Cyrodiil and Elsewhere's case. And that's got the sort of the region specific information in it as well. So you would just download um, for each province you want to install, there'd be one common BS assets mod that we all share. And that'll enable us to do things like cross province travel as well. Um, and then for each province that you want to install, you'll also download the specific uh, province mod as well. well there's no question. Um, so there's no pro progress in Southern Elsewhere uh, because our pre-release is focused on Northern Elsewhere and we haven't started it at all. So it's just the the default land dirt at the moment. There's nothing there at all. 
And I, I actually don't think I needed to talk very much anymore because those two bandits you just killed, I think I voiced both of them. So <laughs> it, it, just, it was like, I don't even need to talk anymore. We'll just let the NPCs start screaming. It must be very strange when you play it, hearing yourself it's, shout. It's a you. little odd, yeah. <sighs> kind of cool, though, too. Kind of. The uh, it's it, Bruma's been out for a while, so I can go ahead and mention this. And for those of you who haven't played Bruma, A, what the hell's wrong with you? B, um, spoilers, uh, just stop listening until I say to stop listening again. I'm not sure how you'd know, but whatever. Ah, here's what I'll do. I'll just wave my arms in front of the microphone when the spoilers are over. Okay, so... Um, uh, the the two followers that you can get in Bruma, uh, there's Dumrag the orc and um, the Khajiit, whose name I just forgot, uh, <laughs> which feels terrible for me to say. Dartakto, that's his name. Um, I voice both of them. So if you just, for whatever, something wrong in your brain, some worm has gotten like, like that, it just, just, ugh. yes. <laughs> Very eloquently put. Thank you. That's why I'm a voice actor, is because I talk so good. There's been a few questions about when um, upgrading from Bruma to Cyrodiil, will you need a new save game? And I believe at the moment, uh, we we don't think that you will. It should be seamless. Uh, uh, is that honest right? answer is we don't know. Uh, we don't it know should be seamless. Something we've yet to test, but, obviously. In theory, it we, should just be a you update it. Because uh, they're the same file, basically. Bruma is just a stripped-down version of the full Cyrodiil release. Um, just with everything not finished yet taken out. Um, of course, it's probably Skyrim, safer it? to do in these in these starts. Safer, yeah, but, yeah. but uh, we will do some testing before we release um, to give people. Um, One thing that would make it so that we have to do a new start would be is if we swap anything from Heartlands into BS Assets, which I think we might have done, then have done that would require a new start. So at the moment we don't know. It, hopefully it will just be update the mod and off you go, but we don't know for sure. Here comes Jonah. Here comes Jonah. Come on. <laughs> the name's Zona. Certainly. What song do we want? I'll give I'll give you know like a bit of time for people to choose a song. Oh, I don't know which is the best. I love Melvin Screenguard personally, but I'll go for it. Can I? Let's find out. There. Death one gun. person yeah. chose it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one, one per or oh, two people chose it. There you go. Crack on. Three. Three. Four. Five. Yeah, go for it. Was born quite the scoundrel, a boy full of storm. Sir Melvin of Skingrad, of glory and fame. Our hero and savior, but only in name. One day during supper, a girl in despair, her brother with scissors had ruined her hair. So Melvin of Skingrad, with dagger and flare, he chased down her brother straight to a fiend's lair. The brother was eaten by goblins and raids, but Melvin of Skingrad, he hid in some crates. And when he tried fleeing, he fell on some glass. He woke all the goblins who ran for his ass. Straight back to the village, the fiends and their bones. The folk started screaming and ran for their homes. But Melvin of Skingrad, <laughs> his heart had been swayed. What hero would flee when his family needs aid? So while his legs weakened, he turned to his side. With dagger and flare, he would die for his pride. For time that was needed, in blood he had paid. The guards all came running, the goblins were slayed. We buried our Melvin with glory and fame. As hero and savior, not only in name. All things being equal, his plight was our fault. He saved us from nothing, but stole all our hearts. Hello. Uh, 
that was excellent. <laughs> Um, and hopefully you should all be able to experience the bard songs once we put them into our final burma patch yeah. when that eventually comes out. Hey, that's not your horse. It's my horse now. It's a strategically placed horse so we can get through Skyrim a bit faster. Yes, just so we don't, don't have to. I don't see your name on it. <laughs> it's a Khajiit if it's not nailed down, it's his. Right, it's his. Back to that stereotype, guys. Mm. No wow. For those of you who have not him. played Skyrim, <laughs> sorry, carry on. I was going to say, for those of you who haven't played Skyrim, this is this is one of the two places you can enter from Skyrim. Wait a minute, that's not a, that's not how I wanted to say that sentence at all. <sighs> okay, so for those of you who have played Skyrim but not Bruma. This, the Pale Pass, is where you enter Bruma from Skyrim. There, that's how I meant to say it. Okay, that, that's how I said it completely, that you can't prove otherwise. <clears throat> I was just chuckling because Mr. JGT had horse transport woes. As he was opening the door, the horse was legging it. Nice. <laughs> Stupid horse. It's always funny if you go through the um, door um, on the horse. Like, if you jump on the horse as you go through it puts you next to the horse but in the position that you're riding the horse <laughs> so you're like trying to move through at the same time as um bye bandits i don't really want to deal with you but this is why we have a horse probably didn't voice any of those bandits nice okay good we're, we're getting out of areas where, where i voice <laughs> stuff He made Skyrim using only vanilla assets, just pointing stuff. Indeed. Hopefully it should feel quite seamless. Although we've covered a lot of different biomes. They kind of they all blend into one so you can transition from elsewhere through Cyrodiil. And now we're uh, in Skyrim. And Burgau, we're so not showing the map. You can open up Skyrim and open the map for your <laughs> damn self. I still get lost. Couple of thousand hours in, and I don't know my way around. Um, I see the question: Are all Cyrodiil horses this fast? Um, I believe we've given them our horses similar stats to those that they had in Oblivion. So the black one that I've got is the fastest. Um, so yeah, there's this one that's the fastest, and then there's the strongest, and all sorts. I can't remember exactly which one has which stats, but I think we have taken that from Oblivion, so which horse you buy from which place you buy it from does have an impact. Was that uh, Helgen? Yes, that was Helgen. Uh, just oh yeah, nothing bad ever happens there. No. Just a normal day. Yeah, perfectly normal. You know what, is it nightfall going... or is it just dark? It's just the weather's all The reason the black horse is faster than all the others is because the speed of darkness is faster than the speed of light. That was legitimate. It must be true. They, they said so in the never ending story too. Uh, <laughs> it always confuse me how a never ending story can have a sequel. Yeah. I mean is it really just a continuation because it didn't end? Or... Maybe. questions everybody so if you've got a question now is a great time to ask one because we're waiting for questions so <laughs> oh, yeah we're just getting skyrim spam yeah. <laughs> to ross the now. voice actor d fog i'm gonna go with no because i don't know who that is <gasps> <laughs> What do you have against wolves? I mean, I know we've got a lot of fox you know, problems in Bruma, but I mean, wolves are such lovely, friendly creatures. They're just trying to kiss you. They're chopping his face off. 
<laughs> How will Daedric Lord voice acting be done? Impressions? Yes, we will be doing impressions. I will do wonderful, impressions of Rich Little. Wonderful Daniel Hodge can do quite a few of them. Yes. Um, so he will yeah. probably... Uh, He's an excellent Shigora, doesn't he? Yeah, yes, he and does. Hermaeus Mora. Um, so he, he's great for that. He can do quite a few Wes Johnson, to the point where Wes Johnson himself has heard some of Dan's stuff and said That's true. Days. So, That's true. like, we, we might not have got Wes, but we've got the, literally the next best thing, so... So, yeah, there's another Elsewhere question. So Elsewhere is going to have a pre-release just the same as Bruma, uh, it, and it'll be the same. It'll have uh, some small side quests, but no main quest to um, touching it until the fo until the final. Uh, at the moment, it is the the Greater Rim area. So where we st where we started off, uh, about the first ten minutes of the stream as we as we headed west, will be in the pre-release. Um, Strict one, one, two, asked if there will be other entrances into Skyrim aside from the ones that we see to Bruma. Yes. Uh, At Wait. Cyrodiil, I don't think we have any extra passes planned into um, Skyrim currently. I think there's just Pale Pass and the cave system. So it will be so wherever you know when you're playing Skyrim and you run. You run out of path and hit the wall that says you can't go that way. So there are all the sort of official borders, and they will link up to Cyrodiil, then um, High Rock, and Morrowind in the end. So if you start in Skyrim and you have all those mods installed, you'll be able to cross the border at the sort of place where it makes sense. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's another one for Cyrodiil. Is the, the um, no. there's any border into Morrowind? Yeah, we've got a border. We've got nowhere into Skyrim, but we do have for Hammerfell, Morrowind, and Black Marsh. There are ways across to there. Uh, no, you mm. can't climb over the mountains from Cyrodiil into Skyrim. You'll have to uh, use the passes. I thought Todd said that we could. He said you can climb it. He didn't say you can climb it between Cyrodiil and Skyrim. I bet you if you asked him, he probably would say. Fucking wolves, just leave me alone. <laughs> I don't and somebody you. asked, I don't know who it was, I, I lost the name in the in the stream of chat, but somebody asked if there will be a damn Dalmor presence in uh, some place. Yeah, so there will be in Elsewhere and Cyrodiil. Elsewhere, quite obviously, as a client state, will be uh, have quite a large... Um, Thalmor presence, whereas uh, in Cyrodiil they'll be less so. It's mostly for similar reasons to Skyrim, to kind of keep an eye on the Empire and make sure they're following the Concordant properly. Um, but don't worry, uh, you don't have to always be their friend. We do have our Resistance quest line, which is in place of the Dark Brotherhood. It fills that same kind of niche. Um, so in that situation you will be able to um play uh, uh against the thalmor and try take them down kind of thing not completely but uh you'll be able to do some damage against the organization within cyrodiil and in elsewhere it'll be slightly different insofar as obviously they are seen by many khajiit as the savior of uh the khajiit against the evil people from the um, so the Thalmor is viewed in more in shades of grey than the black and white that it is in every, every other province. Some people will like them, some people won't, but overall um, they're not seen as negatively. Anyone else getting travel sick from the wolf slaughter? <laughs> there shouldn't be as many wolves now. We want to see what I've done like with Osgrea. Will we get any stronger armor slash weapons than the Daedric except? Don't think so, really. I mean, Daedric's about as good as it gets, isn't it? So you uh, might get similar a ones. Dragon that's more powerful in vanilla. Um, so we might have something of similar strength. 
but I highly doubt it. At least as things currently stand. Um, will projects have mechanics that fill the shout niche from Skyrim? Uh, we in Cyrodiil have plans for something to kind of fill that same niche. Um, which, it's something we haven't finalised yet, so we haven't shown it off. Uh, but once we do, we will kind of do the, uh, show it off a little bit, so people get the idea. Um, but not to the extent that you can use it, so, Hello there, you know, you can always there. discover a bit more to play when you actually play the mod. Well, we won't have shouts and elsewhere, although we will have uh, additional magic. But whether I can say what it is yet. But it's it's very it's very early planning anyway, so um, but we will have something dead off. Uh there won't be Melgrin well, there might be Melvin's grave in Skingrad. Don't know yet. Uh there should be. Mm. Will there be new enchantments? Probably. Um I think Bruma adds a few new ones, possibly. There might be some other new ones. Uh, magic isn't something we've really focused on. Because uh, Roshgrave, we need to finalise our magic system. Uh, well, not our magic system necessarily, but new spells and stuff and enchantments. Well, someone's asked what happens to Cyrodiil once Titus Mead's killed. That's quite a good one. Um, so it will obviously have a negative effect in Cyrodiil. There will be a period of mourning, etc, etc. So the uh, player can experience um, that once. He's killed quite late into the Seat of Sundered Kings um, questline. But then you'll be able to see... Uh, I, th I think there probably will be like a period of mourning, etc, etc, before a new Emperor is crowned. But that's something as we get through the Seat of, Su um, seat of Sundered Kings questline, we will uh, flesh that out more. And I take it that won't be the player? No, the player will not be the Emperor. For anyone thinking that they might become Emperor, I'm sorry, it's bad news. I mean, who the main do you quest. think you are? Dragonborn? <laughs> Plus, it's just, main... it's just it's just admin with a nice chair anyway, isn't it, being emperor? Yeah. All would make you do is sit in a room where you'd have nothing to do but make airs. And sign laws and organise dis uh, settle disputes and things like that. It wouldn't be very exciting. I mean, it's a shame Linton's not here, but the main quest does explore a lot of the sort of the political ramifications after the death of the Emperor. So it does definitely have consequences, and the player will see how it all unfolds. And now we're going to start our journey across to Roscrea. Kill the council and make a dragonborn council. Well, there's only one dragonborn, so it would be a council of one, which I believe they call an emperor. Or a dictator. She... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that could be a reason to being emperor. Some live voice acting for the thing. Well, the problem with that is that there's a bit of a delay. I'm watching the stream with you guys, so what I'm seeing is later than <clears throat> than what we're actually saying. As for me, on my screen, we just walked down the stairs into the hull of the ship, so it's <laughs> a little bit off. You can talk to these characters. Um, I think one of them might be voiced, but uh, we're still in relatively early implementation, so there's not a huge amount of um, voice acting in game yet. There's the odd bit. Yeah, if you Are have they... a chat to them, they can they tell you a little bit more backstory about why they're off out to Roscrea. And the question: Are there younger act voice actors for children? I think we're, we we kind of run into a sticky situation with that, um, because we are basically a volunteer uh, 
project, it's it's a little more challenging to get children voice actors involved in a uh, project like this. We just have an earthquake on the boat. Um, uh, events will unfold. Oh. Since Jarrah's career before. Hopefully you like it. Got all those wonderful ice spells. Why not use it to put out the fire? <laughs> <laughs> we probably need to make it so that the fire causes damage to health as well. On the street, is it the Corsair's Corsair shield? Yeah. I really like that. Oh, and you've got the Corsair sword. That is correct, Arthur's Menadin. Kajit is just asking them a question. Maybe extinguish the ship. <laughs> what do I look like? Since I'll be fine. I'm just meant to, like, you know, help them a little bit. Hmm. I got news for you. When you're on a boat, if it catches on fire, you are by default conscripted to put that stuff out. <laughs> but why would I do that? <laughs> well, I mean, you're do. welcome to drown in the icy waters of the north if you wish. be an option to first radar pirates off their boat potentially but at the moment if they go in the sea they're all right paying to kill they can't go in the sea anymore oh can they not no, excellent someone's made it so they can't get in the sea like ships love being on fire the uh, armor what, yeah. that i am wearing is the chainmail armor from bruma Whoa, that was kind of we do have some elsewhere armor, but it didn't make it into the stream. The person who was finishing it off unfortunately moved house from uh, one side of the world to the other, so they're currently <laughs> a little bit occupied on other things. Oh, God. So self centered. No, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. So here uh, at Roscrea, we've got ships from all across, well, not all across Tamriel, but from northern Tamriel anyway. So we've got the. Uh, Boat and the boatons, the boats from uh, Farron is that one? Uh, yeah. As well as we've got a yes. um, Imperial, the East Empire Company trade ship Need something? from Cyrodiil. So the plan is hopefully we'll be able to travel to Farron and then somewhere in Cyrodiil, probably Anvil as well. So if you have all those mods installed. Once you've come to Roscrea the first time, you'll be able to travel to other provinces as well if you want to. I believe you will find that it is not Lady There's a frame rate shop. Yeah, we need to um, sort that out. 
Not yeah, it's because we haven't done an optimization company. pass on and Crainshaw yet, as it was city. going through a few changes. Besides, but now it's kind of finalized, we can do that. This is the best child voice I can do. It's not great, but it would work for the uh, Questor, who I think has stood at the place. Yeah, he is. What will you do yes. the shipments that keep this very city alive cease to make port? Any and yes. Hopefully the intro quest gives you an idea of some of the sort of main themes that are going on. I can promise you Ros Chris says there's a big problem with Corsair's raiding shipments. And there's quite a lot of politics going on in Crainshaw between the Count who was appointed by the Emperor and then um, the East Empire Trading Company. These two really do not get on. Um, and then as you move away from Crainshaw and the bit that's under Imperial control, that then becomes sort of all the different cults. Brilliant. I think we're going to head over to the capital city. Yeah, the native And then capital. probably call it a day. Yeah. Thank you, Count Everett. What do you need? We've had a request for the map. Mr. JGT, as we're in a new place, so <laughs> it, would be, it would be fair to show the map if you could. Um, and literally, as I tried to do that, it crashed. Oh. That was their plan all along, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. In the usual place. What is that? Oh my God! I don't even know if I want to do that. But I'll I'll do it like that. Do you get to the... I can't do it without laughing. It's okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to break. Do you get to the... Fuck! Do you get to the cloud district very often? <laughs> what am I thinking? Of course you don't. Uh, so we're going to head over to the capital city. You know how to get to... Just back to Crenshaw, don't you? Kitty! I mean, Moo. Let's just cheat there because uh, I don't want to have to do this again. I'm surprised it doesn't save actually. No, it's something we might want to look at putting in. Yeah, we should do. Come on. Can't spell interior. Oh, uh, yeah. I missed it. So. <laughs> the only reason that we demons like eating children is because they're so <laughs> buttery. <laughs> screen music now. Good. I think, or is that just the combat music forever playing? Yeah, that's the uh, opening quest combat music. And uh, Moonquake would like to know if the starter armor can be as good as the high class armor in a later playthrough. Now, my guess is that no, because otherwise it'd be the later armor instead of the starter armor. Most armors, um, 
and it crashed again it's doing that thing again um most armors you can temper um them even vanilla armors to um get them to the same as high level with enough um usage of the enchanting and smithing and potion making stuff so technically yes if you reload this time i've just typed in the comments if you go straight to shamvar in that should unless you're um Playthrough is just a bit messed up, that shit. Somebody just asked if Elsewhere has been on the stream. Yes, we were at the very beginning, but this will be available on YouTube. Will it be today or tomorrow, um, Mr. JGT? Hopefully today. Depends hopefully today. I'm gonna... At, at... You know what, if you start about. from the beginning, Start from the beginning of the stream, elsewhere's the first 20 to 25 minutes of the stream. So, here's the map of Rosgrave, people. Merry Christmas, don't ask again. <laughs> right. We Two don't more voices. Yeah. Two more voices? What do I look like to you? I mean, I know we're not on camera, but, you know. It's not like I'm a voice actor. No. <laughs> Let's take a more creative way around my screen and see if that helps. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Too dangerous. How much pectin do you have to add to the water to make it that thick? A bit. A bit. Yeah. yeah. John, stop at the Ibex camp. Or are you? Are you a man on a mission? I don't know what's there. A lot. I bet. I bet. Shows off some of the new um, tents and bits of cluster, I think. Yeah. Cold, aren't they? I was hoping to get to through four because that shows it off a lot better. Yeah, let's do that then. Yes, Roskri is absolutely real. You can go there in real life. It's an island. Mm -hmm. However, Thanks, Teaspoon. Thanks, Teaspoon. Thanks for playing along and screwing all that. Yeah, just that's fine. Thanks for. Me. How right. big is Roskri compared to Skyrim? Roskri is tiny compared to Skyrim. Is probably more about the size of Solstone. Yeah, it's about the size, kind of a size of a hold um that kind of size oh yeah i forgot that would do that yes tasty goulash we are all awesome that's exactly what i was about to say <sighs> every, every last one of us <laughs> yes totally awesome <laughs> we have our moments Will we be able to worship the old Roscrian gods? And will there be unique obtainable items like Azura's Star, Mace of Molagbal, etc.? Yes. Okay, thanks. We'll go this way. <laughs> the nice, no. simple answer. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. A really um, long I'm question so... and a very short answer. <laughs> exactly. I don't know how much Nick, he's our lead writer, he's not here today would want to reveal about it but um so obviously the at Morin's worshipped um different gods although they're, they're sort of the same they just worshipped in different aspects so a very big theme with both Roscoe and at Mora is um animal cult worship um but actually they have similar aspects to the sort of more familiar Skyrim and Tamrielic gods but yeah you'll have um specific uh cult items for I All the cults that we know about on Bros. Korea. So that guy's wearing shoes, right? Yes. But there's a pair of yeah. boots in the tent. Are those the wolf's boots? I 
Ooh, maybe. Uh, uh, his snuggly warm boots when he gets cold. Oh. I have a few new outfits and games now. I think most of them are based on concepts by Jazago. Um, and hopefully we'll see a few more of those by the time we get to Frethel. I never know how to pronounce Frethel. It just seems like... Me neither. And I'm like, that's close enough. Can't spell it either. I've typed it so much that my phone recognises it, so I don't ever have to spell it these days. No, there will not be guns. Are you saving to make sure if you do yeah. crash again? Good stuff. Away. It's just a Skyrim wolf, I think. Although we do have Roscrone wolves, which are a bit, um, they're more like ice wolves, so they're a bit stronger than vanilla wolves. And a couple of other unique animals as well. See, that wolf was trying to take care of the fox population. Now you. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's partner just left the boots. Actually, uh, no, we get. If you look at the burnout card, there's some stuff in there. Um, but we actually get to meet his partner when we go to Brussels. She sells stuff in the market there. She's been eaten when there's only the boots. Could go either way, really. the reasons why beyond skyrim is so much fun is that this is my claim as well so i also work on ross Korea, uh and helping out um the ross Korea team and this is my claim uh, so we, you'll have a lot of people that work on different provinces doing different things uh, which makes it a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and also helps the mods get done faster Is close are a... we to release? Uh, closer than yesterday is probably a, a good answer. As good a, an answer as any. Not really. No. <laughs> no. I thought that wasn't no. bad, actually. It's not a bad answer. It's just not a, a better answer than than we could. Uh, no. Yeah. So yeah, quick thing about the Ross Greens is like the Atmorans are described as being taller, so the Ross Greens have kept that tallness because they uh, haven't. Uh, bred with the needs, etc., etc. And no, there won't be a quest to breed thousands of foxes and release them. They do that on their own. Three leveled lists. What's going on on this Khajiit's mind to travel for? Um, they're, they're new ones. What's going on on this Khajiit's mind to travel from elsewhere all the way to Roscrea? I hate slavers, it's Vikings life for me. Um, so one of the themes for Roscrea is actually, um, it's all about sort of new beginnings and going away to forget. It's sort of, it's a out, far-flung outpost that's mostly forgotten about by the Empire. So there's a lot of people who've come out here to start over. So it's a bit of a tenuous link. He'd have probably just run to Cyrodiil and stopped there. But um, yeah, the, there are a few themes about um, a quest to explore why people have come to Roscrea. You probably got sick of sand as well. Yeah. It's, Tip for snow. It's practically the same thing. Sand and snow. Colder. Gets everywhere. Will there be any Karma Chameleon spells? Yes, but the chorus is so long you will never be able to finish it before the fight is over. One of the other big themes on Ros Korea is, um, so the reason there's a colony here is Ros Korea in Beyond Skyrim is the only place you can get Mithril from. 
So um, there's quite a good trade. So the natives dig it up and then sell it to the East Empire Company who exports it all over the place to make um, imperial mithril weapons and armour that were in oblivion. So that's kind of our reason for why uh, the Empire is interested in Muscrea. So as we come up over this hill, we will be able to see uh, Furfall as it is in the old lot, um, which needs updating actually. Sand can melt, it's just got to get can... really hot. It Sorry, doesn't it become glass. Well, yes, but you know. Sorry, please continue talking about Furfall. Um, so yeah. Just waiting for it to load in properly because it loads in in a strange order. So yeah, here we are, and the lod is slightly—I don't know why—it needs fixing. Oh look, wolves! Yeah, I got a bit ha carried away as well. The other thing we have is we have uh, instead of regular road signs, we've got um, kind of. Uh, stones instead uh, that kind of mark out where things are so you can kind of see that there it's a lot more there's a greater sense of permanence to use stones it's also for people who are you know wise asses who like to go around and cause problems and they start shifting you know wooden street signs around to point the opposite direction to where, where cities are and stuff it's just jokers the idea do. with the rune stones is you should be able to tell where you are just visually from them. Um, so we have a really talented artist on the team called John Sherrill who made all the rune stones. Like if you look at this one, hopefully without being able to read Roscreen, you'll be able to work out that this is the sort of general goods store. Um, but actually if you do want to learn to read Roscreen, it does tell you that it's the general goods store as well. So it's a way of being hopefully immersive but without forcing people to learn was Korean. That's where we have the same with Targa as well. See so yeah, I'm just looking at some of the uh, new food and utensils that there are on Roscrea. Um Ooh, blackberry wine. I, I like the sound of that. Got some um, Denver as well if you want the hard stuff. We'll work our way And John Combrow's crew. That town would learn Roscrew. Well, you can um, if you want to. And the natives will say the odd word in Roscrew to you as well. Um, and I think the. Uh, but mostly. Thingies will. Uh, a lot of their shouts that they do as they attack and stuff, some of those will be in Roscrean rather than in English as they insult you and your mother. And the statue in the market at the moment is just placeholder, so hopefully that will look a bit better the next time we visit here. Different types of cheese for each province, that's an interesting question. Uh Probably. I would so guess so. Yeah. New types of cheese. Let's, let's, is there someone around here who sells cheese? Yeah, here's some cheese. Uh, yes, yeah, there is. When, when the Rust Crins are loosely based on Vikings. Um, so they eat quite a bit of food, and then they do a lot of goat herding. So it's sort of subsistence farming. And, um, Herding our version of goats, which are the ibex, and making stuff with them, so goats, cheese, and that kind of thing. Um, so we'll go have a look in the mead hall. I'm not sure what the rest screen says there to say, is it the mead hall? 
how many approximate hours will it take to play all the provinces when the full versions are released? How long Depends how fast you play, but a couple of years. <laughs> a long time. Just traveling around takes a long time. So yeah. actually doing things while you're doing doing that will take a very, very long time. And as Claire said, some people go very slowly. Some people run around very fast. So yeah, it'll true. take you a long time. For example, today we've kind of gone from point A to B. We've not really stopped. We've not done any dungeons or anything. And we're going on for nearly two hours now. And we're just getting to the end kind of thing. So it shows you just kind of what um, is achieved uh, just how long these things can take if, you know, however the player wants to play things. So it takes two hours to run from <laughs> elsewhere to Roscrea. Just think how long it'll take um, once there's quests and of course there'll be extra um, islands and things involved. Uh, extra lands to go to, like once you can go to Iliac Bay, etc, etc. You could go for hours upon hours. I was asking you, who's more Nordia, the Nords, Roscreens, or Skull? Roscreens, obviously. It's sort of supposed to be more, not exactly primitive, but we're trying to do with Roscreen sort of a same but different feel to the Nords of Skyrim. So, they both have common ancestors in the Upmorans. And um, you can see a lot of parallels in the Nordic dungeons. So they've got all the animal so cult symbols in them. Um, but the Roscreans still worship the sort of the older gods and that their, their cultures have diverged, but they're sort of they're similar. So do a mark on the map if you finished a dungeon. Yes, there will be. It works exactly the same way as Skyrim, so when a dungeon's cleared, you'll know. So this is the chief, um, the guy who's in charge of Roscrea, at least for the natives. Um, mm. I'm going to take his bear coat on the other, which you'll see in a minute, to show that off. Uh, but then we're pretty much at the end of the uh, stream. So I don't know if we want to take some last questions or anything. You could worship at the bear coat. He's busy worshiping. Uh, statue. Because someone was asking about, um, So yeah. can you worship the cult? So yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can use the shrines. Something. You can wear the um, amulets and stuff. Uh, yes, you can get Clovian Brandy and Cyrodiil. I don't know where your father is. Uh, will armors be released before the mods? Depends on who makes the armor, if they want to and whether we want to. Uh, any Jigalag Ligalag references? Possibly. Uh, can we fire Thalmor out of a trebuchet? Not yet. <laughs> um, when will the next stream be and will we get updates on the other projects? Um, we, don't, we haven't got a set date for the next one, but if everyone enjoyed this, which I hope you all did, we will um, do more of these in future. So if people want to see more of them, then please do kind of shout and say, we want more of this. Um, and we will put it on. And we will do more of these. And of course, if you want to join and help us, then you're most welcome. Yes. Yeah, please do yes. come and help us. I believe below oh, the... Um, oh. I've got some links to the website where you can join up below the um, thingy uh, to join whichever project you want. Black Shall Marsh we do is quick... currently meet, uh, missing off of there, but you can join Black Marsh if you want to. Um, it's just a little bit difficult at the moment. So, yeah, you can uh, join any of the teams that we've got. So we've got Ross Greer, obviously, Elsewhere, and Cyrodiil that you've seen today. We have our Iliac Bay that works on High Rock and Hammerfell, so if anyone wants to go help them, you can sign up for that. Uh, Morrowind team, um, Black Marsh team, and Atmora team. So, yes. We should do a plug for our teams about who specifically we're looking for. So I think we would, most teams will take applications for anything, but then we all have specific bottlenecks. 
So for instance, Roscreo, because we're getting later into development, we could really do with um, implementers who know how to do quest implementation. Uh, a few more 3D modelers would be nice. And then people who are good with writing dialogue. So we've got a couple of quests that are still just ideas that um, we could do with getting those finished. Cyrodiil, definitely dungeon designers and interiors. Uh, we could do with more of those. What else do we need on Cyrodiil, Mr. JGT? Um, everyone always needs 3D artists. That's something we always need. Um, we're kind of set at the moment for landscapers, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, and implementers. Yeah, it's just those ones. Uh, what kind of 3D models do you need for Roscrea? Join up and we'll let you know, but it's things like we need some armors and clothing still made, some weapons and stuff. Neat weapons, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unique weapons and armors. So we've got, I mean, hopefully you notice when we're wandering around, we've got most of the basics in game now. Um, it's just a sort of final polish, add a few more outfits, um, complete a few extra things, a couple of statues, and hopefully we're done. And then I guess elsewhere, so Rob should do a big plug for what you guys need, because they are probably the province that's earliest in development that we've shown off today. Yeah, so we desperately need, as you probably saw when we went through, we desperately need environmental 3D artists to build uh, all of our rocks, and um, t we need textures as well. Um, those are the ones we need critically. Um, we don't need so much in t architecture, because we need the environments first, and obviously we need implementers as well. Um, but anyone who has any 3D skills, we would take them because we have so much that needs doing. Yes, that's probably it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Our voice actors still needed. Uh, in theory, yes, but a lot of them aren't. Um, a lot of us are not quite in the stage where we need them. So, so we, people, we don't we don't need them. Yeah. Cyrodiil is slowly kind of working through. Uh, and Ross Greer will need them in the future, just not quite yet. Yeah, so our plan with voice acting is once everything's pretty much implemented, record it and add all the voice acting in one big chunk. So for Prima, we recorded it over a couple of years and occasionally we had to re-record things. So learning from that, we're just going to do Ros Priya pretty much the last thing we do before we release is to sort the voice acting out. So um, at some point in the future, we will be doing a, a call for voice acting, but we're not quite there yet. So keep an eye on the Twitter. How about writing? Uh, Cyrodiil can do with a few more writers. Elsewhere, I'm guessing, could do with writing. Yes, else, elsewhere we could do. We, I mean, we could do with everything. Um, yeah. el writers, absolutely. But if you have, if you have ability, uh, we'll take you on if we don't like for example we have level designers joining at the moment we don't have much to do with le level design what we tend to do is we tend to say to say to them please join somewhere like ross Korea and help them out uh, and then once we've got a claim and elsewhere then absolutely you can come back and do that um and another place to find out more information about the project as a whole what we are uh what we need etc etc is our discord which a link has been provided throughout the chat and I believe there is one below. If not, there is one below most of our YouTube videos. But as well. Yeah. Beyond Skyrim.org is it still? Yes. Uh, and then finally, just before we leave, thank you for the stream. It's very much appreciated. Will there be a way to rewatch it? Yes, I'm gonna go and um get the recording of it now and I'm going to put it on YouTube so hopefully that should be up by the end of today for anyone who wants to watch it. I guess with that all that's left is to say thank you very much for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Yes.